Hey, nobody. I want to talk about anger. Because I feel angry. <laughs> I've talked about it a bit in, the la- in some of the other <coughs> episodes, I think. I've always had kind of a complex relationship to anger. Can never really... Never really see good good use. I don't know. That's not true. I really saw a good use for anger, but also always in self motivation. I'm kind of going through a season where I think I shared that where there's a lot of kind of anger that was apparently lurking behind beneath the surface. Um, just kind of just came out in the sense not in just like one explosion or anything but more like came out as in my body and then it felt like all of a sudden like you open a box full of bats I don't know it kind of feels like that and I'm I have to think about this dream I I was not so I was am I didn't feel like an angry guy at all. Like, I almost never got angry. That's probably the problem. I almost never got angry. And like I told about when this this feeling disconnected, like your mind from your emotions. Didn't even realize when I actually was angry. I was always trying to avoid that emotion. And I have to think like, I had a dream where I completely snapped in the dream I completely snapped so in the dream people were kind of challenging me ridiculing me threatening me um, in like a bigger group of people kind of like a small little youth gang you know and then in the dream I just snapped and just beat the, <laughs> beat the living crap out of everybody and chased everybody down chased even their family down is like I com- in the dream I just completely lost it right and it really kind of shook me up I felt so bad when I woke up like wow this feels horrible it feels horrible being angry but it also feels horrible just ex- unleashing all that anger and kind of what kind of a monster you I became in that dream and I know, I, I, I don't believe all dreams are like spiritual dreams, but some dreams I feel are spiritual dreams or God is using them to communicate something or you can say your subconscious, your soul is trying to express itself in a way that you are not expressing yourself in the real world. And I guess that dream was, I don't know if it was kind of like a visualization of what's happening beneath the surface or that it felt kind of like this warning dream. Like if you don't deal with this, there will be a time when you will explode. I don't know. I didn't know. Like I didn't know whether it was like an accusation against me. Like you're actually not angry, but this dream wants to make you seem like a monster or it's actually pointing at something lurking beneath the surface. Well, over time I felt like it's definitely something lurking beneath the surface in the sense of it just kind of revealed that deep down I was very angry and that was just something I just didn't really know or realize until just went through multiple things where I just felt kind of I guess combinations of feeling disrespected or slighted or abandoned betrayed and the betrays a little hard little abandoned I guess or Betrayed light, I guess. Um, I don't know. And just, it just, it just kind of felt like slowly. (laughs) Until I just felt like somebody was just rasping with razor blades on the inside of me or something like that. I I guess that's the best way I can describe it. I just felt like everything was raw all the time. Like the inside, like, yeah, your inside, you were just, you felt, I guess, felt hurt in some sense, emotionally hurt. Like, I never 
because I've been through a burnout before, but I, I've never had anything like this. I always look down on people who were like super emotional or emo not that I'm like super emotional as in like super mood swingy or anything like that. But I guess I, could, I always kind of look down on people who felt like very strong, deep emotions in some sense. I don't know if look down is the right word. I just didn't understand it. I just... I just couldn't grasp it. I just couldn't. I just never had that. So I was always like, when you know, it always feels like you're exaggerating. <laughs> um, get out of your feelings and go act normal. You know, like, uh, and this was like the first time in my life where I couldn't control it. I could still, in a sense, I wasn't really still expressing anger. I wasn't like going around and smacking people up or cursing at people or anything like that. But it was more like I couldn't control it here internally. And that, I guess, was a disappointment for Mr. Control. What I'm just really frustrated about now, I'm just in that kind of season now of trying to understand what the heck's going on feeling anger one in a sense wanting to feel anger more because i want to have that healthy balance between my mind and my emotions but it's like i still have that kind of disconnect that little that i just something just happened and i got this weird feeling in my body which i'm always like oh, come on like what, what are you doing it always still feels like a meta experience like like i'm not there like it's just doing something and it just, I guess it still shows just a pattern I've built over my life, I guess, that I'm not in touch with those emotions. Like I'm not, so like, even like a small thing can happen, it's like a small disagreement or like a small little, somebody says something and it feels like a little, like a little stab, like a, like a you know, like one of those paper cuts. And then I, I noticed like, hey, that was disrespectful or hey that was yeah something like that and I just now I'm learning to kind of like voice that more but it's still just kind of slow I'm still kind of slow I guess like wait a minute it's like that feeling is always just like an echo um, later and I just I'm just frustrated because it also feels that the way this anger is manifesting now, it feels kind of like since that box has been opened by, I guess, it's been kind of like building, 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 and there was just like, um, it wasn't like this, yeah, in some sense a bigger thing happened, but it's not like this huge thing happened. It was more like, it was this bigger thing that was kind of like the pump that kind of like, was like, okay, the hell with it, kind of like release that kind of, <clears throat> frustration and there was more situations of the past that I was kind of revisiting and actually experiencing oh I was actually angry back then like I didn't even know and then when I would just kind of I would just kind of like make like voice memos for myself just to kind of like, like what would I say about the situation kind of like these rants but maybe a bit more uncensored even more not that I'm trying to censor now but I guess more raw even more raw of what I would say to a person like in in, in a certain conflict and it just, it just revealed to me like, oh, it's, uh, oh man, I was really angry there, like, and I just, I don't know, I guess early in life, like I say, the, the problem I had with anger early in life was also, I didn't dare to express it, I was really angry, and my mom didn't dare to express it, so I never learned to express it, anger, I never learned to deal with anger coming my way, or me expressing anger. Then I started expressing the anger too much my brother because he's like five and a half years younger. Like I have a younger brother. And there, of course, you do feel safe to express your anger. So he kind of became the target of that until I kind of realized what I was doing. Oh, I'm actually angry at my mom, but I'm expressing it towards my brother. So I asked forgiveness, try to make that right because I really saw, oh, man, I'm going to, he's going to, he's going to come like me, I felt in a, at a moment. And that really made me like, I don't want him to be like that. Like, I don't want him to be filled with anger, like on the inside. 
And anger, I just expressed anger, I guess, in humor, in ridicule, trying to, so of being afraid of like any, any type of kind of physical, you could say, or like real confrontation, like shouting at people or cursing at people or fighting or something like that, or being provocative even in your behavior. Like I just didn't dare express that anger. So humor is like one of the few ways and art in drawing, like. When I see like these old drawings of mine, you just see all these characters, and there's such a anger kind of coming from these drawings. And just didn't learn to express it any other way, I guess. So the way I expressed my anger was towards myself in trying to grow or improve. So I would basically use that anger as fuel. I use that energy of anger, you could say, to fuel myself to become better at things. So, like, I, I love basketball, but I was short, so a lot of my friends were bigger than me, and even though I felt I was technically, like, more fundamentally sound, they would win because they could just block me, block my shot. So I just kind of, I then used that anger to kind of like, come on, Wes, come on, you could do that, man. Don't, and don't be, and then you would just, just train, like, all summer, shoot, and if you miss, get angry at yourself, go run. So you would basically attack yourself, which is kind of weird because if anger, in some sense, a healthy anger is supposed to protect the self in some sense, like put up good boundaries, then using that anger to attack yourself is actually kind of like doubling up on the shit, <laughs> right? So. I also wonder with like the burnouts, because I was always tired as a kid when I was like, uh, especially I think I guess 15, 16, I can't really remember much earlier than that, but I was as a teenager, I just remember being tired almost all the time. And always when people were like, yeah, we're going out. Yeah, when, when are you going to that party? Yeah, like at 12, we're at one. I'm like, what? You're going to it at, at, at one o'clock? I want to be in bed by then. Like I'm already exhausted. Uh, like 11 so yeah I just that just kind of gets me thinking now I'm just thinking out loud of course that idea of because I heard this guy I forgot his name it's this famous guy he talks a lot about anger and about the repression of anger and repression of the authentic self and the child this very kind of down to earth guy funny name I don't know Anyway, he talks a lot about um, that there's the expression of the self and there's the, the need for a connection, like the fear of rejection. And then the expression of the self will often suffer just so you don't get rejected. So we will suppress parts of ourselves. And that's often something that will get you later on in life, like sometimes in the actual form of disease. And he was kind of like putting, making this link between um, that emotional kind of system, that healthy, for example, healthy anger and healthy saying no, he was claiming something as that it's connected or actually it's a similar system, the same system as like your immune system that, that says no to like stuff, but then on a cellular level, stuff in your body. That if you start repressing that, that it actually will hurt your immune system as well, which is interesting. I never really got sick a lot, except for now this burnout thing. That was, I would say, if there was anything about me that was like sick a lot, then it's the sense of being fatigued all the time. And especially after the first burnout, of course, that was like a bomb. Like a, then it's, it's kind of like it just went over the edge, I guess. And it just gets me thinking now to think about that, like by repressing your anger and or by using your anger to motivate yourself, you're actually kind of shooting at yourself. It's like, you, you know, like an autoimmune disorder almost. Yeah, man, and I just don't know what to do about it. What frustrates me is that now it feels like there's this bigger cause of this anger. So it feels like there's this general sense where I believe a lie or where this deep wound is about, I don't know, feeling like you don't matter or feeling like you're being disrespected or neglected or that whatever you do or produce is not important. Um... I guess there, that's something. 
I always kind of felt that, I guess. That in some sense, being creative, doing a lot of stuff, but never really feeling like you, like it meant something, right? Like, like, like it had a deeper purpose uh, apart from self-expression. Of course, it is important that you do that, but there's like this desire, I guess, in a creative to to have a voice. Um, but also, like in my basketball, didn't really feel like yeah, with my parents that uh, not that engaged, which is okay. I mean, they can't do everything, three kids. But I guess somewhere this lie slipped in that oh, what my other, my brother and sister are doing, that matters. But what I do, that doesn't matter. That's not valuable. Better yet, that is actually damaging the family because you let your basketball games go ahead of going to, I don't know, my sister's gymnastics presentation or something like that. So I guess that in some way that might be a root cause of it. I don't know. I say that because like I've done prayers that heal the heart for a lot of subjects, which is kind of like going deep on a certain subject to really see, okay, how in your life has this lie or this sin been built up think about the relationship with your parents and your like your ancestral line like is this something that's in your families think about relationships like do you have soul ties you could say have you tied yourself to people and ha do you have unbalanced relationships where there's domination intimidation manipulation that have fed this lie or are there wrong things that you believe about yourself or about God or about others are there wrong vows you've made in your heart like wrong decisions about I will always do this or never do that are there traumatic memories that still communicate that lie are there curses spoken over you or that you spoke over yourself or and are there actual unclean spirits that are actually messing with you I did that for like a couple um, subjects which was always very intense but also always very liberating and freeing at the end eventually so I actually don't know whether I did that about anger, which is stupid, like I did it a couple times. And I actually don't, for, don't don't remember, like, did I do that for anger? It was one of the... So I think I might do that, because I, I, I feel like there's a deeper thing. Why this whole problem with anger? Why my whole life? Um, and kind of, I guess, there can be some growth in, okay, when you feel angry, express it, try to be more i guess defending your boundaries and but but there there's a deeper and a higher way like so now these little things i'm actually like well this this, this shouldn't even have to make me angry right like and and i guess that's now kind of what i don't really know what i'm kind of in limbo is that is that true or is that actually the cause of my problem <laughs> that i feel like oh that should make me angry but it does but i say well it shouldn't so i'm not expressing it or right no like but uh, but I but I still do feel in a deeper level like it shouldn't in the sense of it just shouldn't. It's like it's silly. It's like um, you should be way more secure in yourself. So that's why I think. Like I think if there's this deeper lie that I can s uproot with Christ, then the deeper kind of reason why I have that brewing anger is will be gone. You can still become angry in a situation, but now it feels that if I become angry in a situation, it's actually all this anger, you know, that's expressing its, finding an outlet there, finding an out, oh, of, I, again, feeling overlooked, disrespected, I don't know exactly what it is, but it's like all this energy and stored up, I guess, energy of this lie is just coming out and these little tiny things in like in an in a, in a, in a what do you call it, in a, in a strength and an intensity that is really not related at all to what actually happened. And I just want to get rid of that because it's just, yeah, limiting me. It feels like it's draining. Like I actually feel like I play basketball in the morning, so I'm a little, a little exhausted, but I also feel emotionally like it's a combination of physical and emotional. Ah. <sighs>
I just want to be whole in that area. Yeah, anger. That's really, I guess that's also part of uh, maybe the burnout and being a bit depressed because of the burnout, kind of like that feeds each other, of course, is the, that then all of a sudden everything becomes, way, you become agitated way more, way quicker, right? Like, so that is kind of feeling that agitation, feeling that anger, like, you're like, ah, you just don't want to, it's just a frustrating kind of place to be in feeling that imbalance in your emotions because it's clear it feels like an imbalance like it's like you also like your mind is like it is imagining conflict a lot so like even like a little thing can happen and then all of a sudden your mind just goes like this gonna happen this whole fight in your mind or this argument or so yeah I, I did I did read that it's kind of part of what they see with burnouts and depression, anxiety, I guess, those type of things, is that it just, I don't know why, but it's kind of like, so if your body wants to prepare for that, I don't know, like being burned out is kind of like already enough, enough, so it's doing that in, your, in his mind, I don't know, it's weird, oh, my energy feels really off right now, I really feel kind of woozy and said it's kind of this blob in your belly and you're like why are you there blob that's the kind of again the meta is part of it is kind of just it fascinates me as like an analytical person and maybe it is that way because I am an analytical person like that I that you analyze it so that you like you you you, you can experience it you can't be in it or something so I've tried to like uh, do more kind of like quiet meditation sit in the silence with God or meditate on just a simple truth or like being in the presence of God like envisioning myself in front of him, his throne or and just letting the silence speak so to say and I sometimes I have this weird feeling when you're like silent for like 20-30 minutes and all of a sudden it's like and then there's this release of something in your brain or in your mind, uh, like this tension that releases, that was apparently just cramping on for all the time. So that's, that's the weird thing, like a feeling of like this tension on your scalp. It's like your brain, your brain is like doing this all the time. Ha! Ah, I guess that meant with the... Uh, The frustrating thing is that the anger is always kind of preceded by like a, just a strange pressure here of evasiveness, I guess, avoiding conflict, like of not wanting to have that little confrontation. Like my wife could say something to me and I'm like, hey, and I want to respond to that. But then like in the build up, there's just this, this weird feeling. And you're like, why am I feeling this? Right? Like, so, yeah, kind of disjointed, but hey, it's a rant. It's my rant. I can make it as disjointed as I like. I'm kind of just really thinking it out loud while I'm sitting in the middle of it, trying to feel what I feel. I guess that doctor, like that, what he said, that the suppression of self is very often comes first. It's the first thing we sacrifice rather than the connection to others, right? I guess maybe that there might be some personality difference, but I think, I think he's right uh, in general. Like I think most people would prefer to stay connected and then slightly alter our behavior than to like really be your true authentic self no matter the cost. I think most people are not there and there's something to say about what that looks like or it's the difference between being an asshole and being your true authentic self, I guess. But um, yeah, it's just weird, man. The, it is in some sense a suppression, I guess. And that's maybe what needs to be healed. 
But now there's this fear, now kind of like the energy, the anger is kind of floating about in your body a bit. The fear is there that if I am going to act like try to express boundaries or my anger, that this whole other layer of anger is going to interfere, which creates this vicious cycle of, so I'm not going to express it, so it builds again, so I'm not, but, you know, kind of feeds into each other of like having this, how do you get rid of the build up, right? How do you get rid of the build up without just some poor schmuck just having to, you know, face the full brunt of something that he, that is completely unrelated to what that person did. And I saw this image that God gave me, which was hopeful of like, a, almost like this blob, kind of like crystal structure, which was hollow. And it was just like pulsating. And like, it was like God was breaking it open. And I was afraid to break, break it open. He broke it open. And then this liquid came out or just, just, just gas kind of. And I had to think that about that was anger, but that the crystals were kind of standing for that, that the, the mind's constant kind of like pattern and constant kind of like imagining the situations and kind of like rehashing things in your mind. It's like it's, or you're thinking in some other way, it's kind of creating this structure like in Christian terms you have the what do you call it again bolwerke in Dutch strongholds in your mind strongholds basically are are that are like you could say niches of thinking in your mind that are that are so cohesive that they form like a, a stronghold of a lie um, like there's such a, a a group of lies built by memories and emotions and decisions and thoughts that solidify something like I'm not valuable and that actually gives space for a spirit an unclean spirit to just be there and just be protected you could say by the stronghold and just can operate freely because you believe that lie so that spirit can kind of bring you his lie he also feels rejected or whatever and then just keep feeding you that and create a, gain more and more control of that part of your life so to say so it kind of felt like I was showing a bit about like this anger becomes clamped in because of the way you think in some sense but the way I think is also a way of coping with not acting right like so there's this, all this it's not like a one to one relation but there's all these things are connected in some sense if you would act more you would probably think less about it says the thinker you still I still need to break myself like stop myself when I go like Rup, but I have that really like the seeing like the endless endless scenarios all the variants played out of some situation and I guess then you sometimes create something in your mind that's not really there at all right like you create a danger or like a potential argument that might not even exist in the real world like it's a potentiality right? like if that person could react like that but they could not and and, and often sometimes you you can stop yourself because you see the what ifs and in your arrogance you think like you're smart enough to predict the what ifs basically ah Yeah. So that's why I'm also not convinced about just have your outlets, right? Like, I used to have that. Like I said, I had the basketball. I had the like. So I would express my anger at video games, and competi competition, every type of competition. But even like school would be competition in some sense, like trying to get better grades than other people, look down on them, be, feel better. These are all coping mechanisms to deal with that deeper kind of, I guess, insecurity or that, not just insecurity. So there's, there's probably some insecurity there as well, but also to deal with that energy, that energy of anger. Um, but in an image, the idea of that anger flowing out and eventually I saw like the crystal structures like sc scratch over the floor and eventually they were being picked up. I was kind of like tempted to just go walk. I know it hurts, but hey, that's the price you need to pay. But God was like, no, it will be clean and you can just go and walk. 
and also this 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 kind of like these these things in my head that were unscrewed and out and like I saw the inside of my brain healing and restoring and kind of like my hair growing back which I think is a symbol for like my youthfulness the energy of youthfulness kind of returning which is really hopeful so that's kind of the, the promise I'm clinging clinging to in this season but yeah it does make it, it I'm just frustrated because it's such a mix between like it feels it's such a mix between physical things emotional things and spiritual things and of course we are spirit soul body we're as a human being we're a whole unit right like we're an entity composed of those parts so all of the matter so in some sense you can really isolate is it just the body is it just the spirit is it just a, like they're entwined right and i think you see that in scripture a lot as well jesus heals people by setting them free of unclean spirits or he he, for, he forgives them their sins and he says, I, I'll prove to you that I forgive him and him, him and his sins. And he says, go and stay up, rise up and walk, right? Like, so there's this interconnection between these things. So I was saying that because I was random when I was kind of like praying about that and, and that, that vision, I wrote it down and I was kind of praying about it. And then I just had to think about thyroid, thyroid and anger. So I Google thyroid and anger. And what do you know? One of the first things I, I, I feel, uh, I find, repressed anger and thyroid malfunction. And what are the symptoms? Well, fatigue, anxiety, like basically a lot of the symptoms that I recognize. But I've had that now with so many things. Like there were so many things that sometimes something would just come and then I would just look it up and then lo and behold, there's all these. And then, of course, chicken, it's a chicken egg story. What, it, what happened first? Did your thyroid go bad or did you... Right, you know, like what is kind of like what came first? I don't care, but it is interesting that like I'm getting like these things on my path. I feel like God is showing me like both, you could say, emotional things in the sense of like, okay, what can I do with my will and with my thoughts and like with my soul, so to say, spiritual things and like how God can take things away, wash you clean, and have the power of the Spirit through you to produce these other fruits. And then the body, like how can you help restore your body where it has damage because of the way you've been acting and suppressing and stuff so it was very interesting that the first thing i found about thyroid was and anger was like repressed anger and thyroid malfunction and something about it like that iodine that iodine could help or would help iodine supplementation so then i look back at like uh, i had a live blood analysis here and i had like this huge file which was like so long i just started doing some stuff some specific some hints or some some suggestions of how you could maybe um, improve your health and yeah, again, what was there, you might benefit from iodine supplementation. Like, so it was interesting, like how these, uh, oh, that actually also overlaps with kind of her analysis, what she saw in my blood. So yeah, um, trying to attack it from all fronts. Just feel a bit drained right now. So yeah, the thing with the meditating and the, it does kind of suggest that you're just overworking. Your mind is still kind of overworking. So sometimes when I was just meditating, I would just say or pray or like and like even direct at yourself like, okay, body, I don't need you to be in fight and flight mode right now. Thank you for not, for trying to protect me. But that is gone. It's almost like this old trauma response. It's just kind of like still right there, like, like activated so quickly. Yeah. And those emotions just drain a lot of energy. I'm just so frustrated because my energy is coming back and I'm feeling way better actually the last couple of months. I hope you see it in the other videos. Um, but the, inter the frustrating thing is that I'm just such an energetic guy. When I'm just like myself, I'm really high energy. I like to do, do funny voices, act out, like a very expressive, very theatrical, I guess, in some sense. And I guess that's a part of yourself that you're also kind of suppressed in some sense, especially coming from uh, <laughs> the Netherlands. We have a saying in the Netherlands, act normal, that's crazy enough. So I know like uh, I'm in that sense to not Dutch at all. That side of me, that's clearly my South American side that it's uh, a bit different, way more expressive and 
I guess that's maybe part of why I never really feel at home in the Netherlands. I mean, I have great friends, don't get me wrong. Like I have great relationships, but at large in, in, in certain larger groups, you did always feel a bit like you're the, what do you call it? The, like the, 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 cl the clown, the, the joker, the, they have a name for it, like the king used to have, Nar, that's in Dutch, what's it, Jester, the Jester. Um, kind of feeling like they're looking at you like a circus attraction, you know, like, uh, and yeah, I guess in some sense, sometimes you would just kind of embrace that because you're just like, well, this is me. But you, but you don't feel completely free, even though I felt, I felt free enough to still act crazy in that sense, or just feel just express myself. But you would not feel completely at ease, and in some places, of course, you would kind of too much for the white folk. <laughs> don't mean to make this a race thing, but like in general, especially kind of like the out outside of the city kind of white folk in the Netherlands. And I guess outside the city in any country is different from the city, right? Are not really used to that. But even within the city, like when you were a student or something, I always drew more to international people, which is strange because they couldn't be from any culture, right? Like I want to talk about that another time. Like how does the being biracial, being between two cultures and not really feeling like you have a home play a role in this? suppression of anger and stuff I guess yeah if you look from the racism angle I wouldn't say I had uh, tons and tons of racist experiences but I guess enough to internalize it and which made you feel unwelcome which did make me feel unsafe in different places even though Netherlands is like one of the safest countries in the world um, but like Definitely around certain groups of white people, I would not feel safe. Uh, like bigger youth groups, kind of like, <laughs> when I was younger, I was always, I was really scared. I really always thought that they were just gonna beat the shit out of you or just. So I did feel that, I guess, I guess in some sense, maybe that's also kind of like having the, having had those, like I never, Again, never responded in anger as well at those racist things that I did experience. Um, I always just kind of just brush it off, I guess. Which in some sense might be better for a situation, but there's this kind of like, I, I do think it contributed in this building, this undercurrent of feeling not quite at home, feeling uh, disrespected. It's funny how respect and fear are always very closely related, right? Like you have this famous saying, right, by this um, Machiavelli, I believe, is it better to be feared or be respected? It's better to be respected, but it's easier to be feared, right? Like it's kind of like a cheap, the cheaper version of respect. But respect itself is also a type of fear. It's not, it's, it's not, oh, this guy is going to smack the shit out of me because he can't control himself and he's lashing out all the time. But it is, he could smack the shit out of me. It's, it's like a healthy respect is it kind of like a healthy, what's respect related to, especially among men? Respect is related to strength, right? Especially among men. And it should be more because, right, you can respect, um, like a man respecting a woman is often not because she's stronger than him or she can go toe to toe with him, at least not physically, mostly not. Um, maybe she could do that intellectually, but that's usually not kind of like the, where the respect among men. Men, we kind of have like these little competitive things, whether it is, and it can, it can manifest in who has more money, who has the better job, who has the bigger mouth, who can ridicule the other better with jokes, who can, who is better at basketball, who's better at football, who's like, it just, we, we men, we, we look for those kind of little things, like every time you meet somebody, there's still, there's this, there's this little, I think it's subconscious for most men, some men, some men might do that very, very conscious, and it kind of depends maybe on the circumstance you're in, like I, if I'm, 
if I'm playing basketball, to me, that's, I, I'm doing that. I'm very aware of that. Like, if I come to a new court, I'm very quickly, like, scanning everybody and, like, who's the best player here? And am I better than him or not? Where am I? Where am I in this hierarchy? Kind of like, that's kind of what you intuitively do. Or when a new person comes to the group, you kind of, you're also kind of like that. If you're the top dog at the court and then somebody guy gets along, you're like, I will show him right now that this is my court. <laughs> And maybe it's better, right? Like So that's a little thing that men do. But even if we don't play sports, like when you're at a company, when they're you, in some cultures, it's way more overt. Like a woman comes in a group of men and like they start talking about, I don't know, accomplishments or they start joking at each other, like kind of diss each other and stuff. Uh, that's, yeah, it's funny. Like, so respect does have something to do with that. Could you beat me? Can I beat you? And respect is, in some sense, a, a, a healthy fear of the other's strength. Like, I won't completely humiliate you because I see your strength and I, res and I don't want that coming my way for no reason. And you see my strength and know that could also come your way. So let's both be like, hey, we both think we are real men. <laughs> We're strong. And I think there... That's a, a major, major part of the anger, I think, for me. That feeling I wasn't respected and didn't standing up for myself because I was afraid to kind of like physically or verbally be like, hey, cut, the, cut, cut it out or F you or push back at somebody that's like physically intimidating you. So there is a lot of, that's where I can like all those kind of imagine, imagine fights and conflicts and arguments come from of apparently like I didn't do it then and then in your mind I'm doing it and then it's like but over the years it's been like so many of these little all these moments where you didn't say anything or you didn't stand up for yourself or you didn't push back or you didn't I don't know whatever and that it's just like that now your mind immediately go like the, the conflicts is getting worse like in your mind like fights people get hurt people die or I don't know you damage relationships irreparable to, to you can't repair them anymore something like that you know which is yeah so that's why i'm kind of pulling the brakes ringing the bell for myself like okay wesley you really need to deal with this you something's got to change and i guess the scary part for me is like i don't know exactly what to change so i'm just trying stuff like like this say what you mean say 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 what you mean say it even if it's scary or you confront stuff, say it. Try to do that in real conflicts. Try to, in that sense, carve out your space a bit more. Dare to confront, dare to challenge. But again, the deeper thing, I want to solve the deeper lie of what is underneath there? What is hurt there? Because I still believe, for the same reason that hopefully a grown-up wouldn't, when a kid is like, where are you? And a grown-up is like, Okay, we're going to go to bed. No, I don't want to go to bed. Go. The, the grown-up is not in that energy, right? And uh, kids can do that to you. That's like the very confronting thing when kids do pull you in that energy when you're like, oh, man, I'm arguing with a kid. Like, I'm having an argument like with a kid. Like, this is unfair. Like, uh, they do pull you in, but that's usually because, again, there's something in you that's being triggered by this behavior of this child, which has, like, this old wound. So I also don't want that for my children that... If I get angry, there's this layer of all this anger, of all these things that have nothing to do with them. So, yeah, working. Just digging and really wanting to get to the bottom of. I just believe that. If the, Jesus says the truth sets you free. The truth about who we are, who I am, and the truth about who God is, who I am in relation to God, in relation to the people around me. That will set me free. So the lie, if the truth sets you free, the lie keeps you bound. That's basically, and yeah. If it's a lie that keeps you bound, you're not actually bound because it's a lie. That's the stupid thing. Artificial self-incarceration. Basically what we do a lot. So yeah.
I guess that's all I want to say. Still in the middle of it. There's no conclusion yet. Want to understand the root better. And so I'm really able to deal with the root. So both. You could say you're going you're gonna to burn a candlestick. Both ends get to the center in the sense of you want to you want to b start build new routines and new healthy ways if you did have an unnatural way of dealing with anger. But you also want to have like the unnatural buildup of anger removed by getting to the bottom of that. And that's not just going to happen. You, you need to go hit that sore spot wherever that is and let that heal. So you can, so God can really rip it apart, rip it away from you, just deliver you from that. I heard a beautiful testimony about that like this. That was encouraging like this last weekend. We heard a sermon about somebody exactly having a testimony like that. Somebody was just angry and just fre freaked out and uh, in traffic all the time. Like I never had stuff like that. Like that's some more like over, I guess the anger. Some people repress the anger. Somebody, and some people just over express the anger. And, like, and this in a, in a way it's the same problem and expresses itself differently. Um, and then God just took him back to a memory, healed that, kind of restored truth about that, and then he was just delivered. Just didn't didn't have that anymore. A couple of months later, he didn't have it. A couple of years later, he still didn't have it anymore. It was just free. It was just out of him, and that's I guess my desire. So maybe prayers to do the heart. Maybe I'll pray about that because I just I want to get to the bottom of it. But it's. Um, yeah, it's not fun to be in. It's not like I feel like this all the time, but when there's these little things that can happen, then all of a sudden it just kind of enlarges again. You're like, ah, here we go again. But it's it's getting better. It's like they're becoming more spaced out, so to say. And you kind of recognize the situations better. But again, poco a poco. Poco a poco. Step by step. Yep. Anger. Maybe a little bit more. I was thinking about. <laughs> I have to think about that physical expression of anger, like the outlet. So I was thinking about like the, like why do the dreams and the imaginations go to that, right? Like why do they go to physical like fights, really smack somebody up, right? Why? Why? What is it? What is it about anger that thinks it can find resolution by doing that? Like by, I guess in some sense it's you're, you're trying to destroy the source of the trespass. Destroy the source of the press, trespass. Like, ah, ah. You know, like, I just, yeah, I just, I just got, because that's kind of like what a lot of people say, like, oh, we'll just go do martial arts or something, go do boxing and just go, go beat people, get beat. That'll help. But again, I'm kind of like, maybe I should just try it, but it still feels like it's the, the uh, fighting the symptom and not the cause. Um, but it's interesting that anger, that the emotion of anger leads to that physical wanting to destroy something, like wanting to hurt something. Like, what is it about? Is it like, is it like revenge? You know, like is it like payback? Is it like I was hurt, now you are hurt? Is it indeed like that is the source? Kind of like ee, you want to turn off the alarm, like, but it's just to turn off this alarm. I gotta boom, boom, boom. You know, like go a little harder. But sometimes it can't just be just like, and I never had this as a kid, so I think like. You don't want to be like violence is the way, uh, definitely not, because that's like an endless cycle. But there is still to me something healthy about young boys wrestling and like play fighting and even like a little pushing and shoving. Because very often you see like, okay, and then they're friends again, you know, like and that, that helps them kind of get to know their strength, get to know how to deal with strength and like um, and deal with anger in a way without having to be like completely destructive. Just like you have combat fighting or you have, we have sports, it's still kind of hurting the other in a sense in, 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 in a situation that is still governed by some rules, right? Like so usually when boy, little boys would be fighting, there are still some rules there. 
you're not gonna you're gonna stab somebody in the eyes or like or hit them in the nuts like there's usually kind of like these unspoken rules about how you are to engage in this fight and otherwise otherwise it's gonna be like now we have a real real fight right like there's gradations of fights uh, depending on the escalation depending on the escalation and I was just thinking yeah I was just thinking how interesting that is like the why why does that why does that work like that like why and again for me I guess that's a rarely been in a fight in my life I don't think I maybe ever like yeah, maybe just a handful of times when I was a kid and so never having that experience it's interesting it's just interesting to me like I can get I can get it as in like you're in my boundary and I say stop but it's interesting that it can translate to I just want to punch something right like the people just <laughs> hooligans like you're gonna be angry and just want to smack something doesn't even matter whether it's the source it's kind of like just a replacement anything I act like you're the source maybe that's kind of like what I'm doing in my mind right like it's just having these conflicts and arguments that you usually win <laughs> fights and agreements and stuff where if not the real thing then here so and I guess that's that's people expressing the anger in a physical sense on somebody else or on some other situation or in a play situation like in fighting sport situation they're doing that but yeah I don't know I was just kind of fascinated that it's kind of like it's kind of like enforcing a no right like no stop talking no 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 boom boom no you can't do anything anymore <laughs> it's strange yeah it's interesting I was just kind of, um, it's still an important part about the emotion of anger, right? Like crying doesn't have that usually. Uh, feeling sad doesn't have that. It's anger that has that. The self-defense mechanism, literally, like uh, the, the fighting, like your body fighting off these things. Your anger is fighting off an invader. And even if it's, if we can project the evader, invader on something, <laughs> good enough. Yeah, and that's kind of strange, right? Although, I guess with sadness, we tend to, I was saying like we don't do that with other emotions, but we do. I was thinking like with sadness, for example, somebody's really sad, and then they go watch sad movies, right? Like, oh, he's, like, oh, he's leaving her just like he left me. Yeah. Kind of like that. So you kind of, kind of still also kind of project just the emotion of sadness to, to just express it. So yeah, I guess we do that as humans. We're weird. But hey, got to learn to deal with it.